Maxwell's refresh completely revamped his Shadow Duelist, taking them from being very expensive and getting one shot or two shot by strong bosses to being cheap and able to tank many hits despite on paper having the same amount of hit points. So the duelists are really good compared to before, however there is one area that they are sort of lacking which would be control. Wendy's rework gave her way better control over Abigail, allowing her to set Abigail to both aggressive and passive, as well as making it easy to summon and unsummon her sister. Weber's rework was almost all about controlling your spiders. The Webby Whistle sets all your friendly spiders to neutral and calls them back to you. The Den Decorating set lets you control neutral spiders to a certain extent, making it safe for your teammates in damageable structures like walls. The shoe box allowed you to not only put away your friendly spiders, but it gave you the ability to stop any aggression from friendly, neutral, and even hostile spiders. Unfortunately for Maxwell, his refresh didn't really give him any new tools for controlling his duelists. Therefore, in order to be able to control them, it's vital that you know how they work. And that's what I'll be going over in this video about how to control Maxwell's duelists. So to spawn his duelists, open the Codex Umbra and click on the duelist icon. Once clicked, your cursor will change to two circles, one small and one big. The small circle tells you exactly where he will spawn. As you can see, the big circle is about seven turfs across. The big circle indicates two things. The first thing it indicates is the area in which your duelist is aggressive. Once he spawns, your duelist will target anything within the large circle that is not friendly. This is not limited to just hostile mobs. It includes neutral ones as well. The second thing it indicates is where the player must stand in order to keep the duelist alive, while it isn't fighting anything. If you summon the duelist and it isn't fighting anything, it will remain summoned until its two minutes are up. If you summon the duelist and you stand outside the circle and it's not fighting anything, it will die in 10 seconds. However, if your duelist is fighting something, then it doesn't matter if you stand in the circle or not. As long as it's not unloaded off screen somewhere, it will only die if it is killed by whatever is fighting it or its two minutes are up. When a duelist is summoned, it will aggro onto the closest non-friendly thing that is within the bigger circle. If there are no non-friendly mobs in the circle, it will just idle in place until either a non-friendly mob enters the circle or the player either attacks or gets attacked by something. Once your duelist picks a target and starts attacking it, it will never stop until either the duelist or the target is dead. I think this is the main reason why knowing how your duelists work is so important. Once they pick a target, there is no going back. If they pick the right target, then all is good most of the time. If they pick the wrong target, it can be really punishing. For example, if you're trying to fight Kloss in the picking biome and one of your duelist targets a pigman, the fight can go south really fast because now you have to deal with Klaus and all the pigmen who are aggroed onto you. This is why when fighting bosses, it's really important to use Shadow Prison before summoning duelists. Shadow Prison will lock the bosses in place, which allows you to summon your duelists right underneath them, which in turn ensures that they target the boss. In the event that this isn't an option for you, an alternative is to summon your duelist away from the boss and then fake an attack on the boss with the boomerang. This allows you to more precisely set your duelist on a target. The boomerang is a really useful tool for Weber as well as Maxwell. Unlike Weber, Maxwell probably won't be using the boomerang a lot in boss fights. Instead, it's more of a utility item that lets you hunt things that are fast such as rabbits or birds. Aside from hunting fast mobs that run away, I'd say the boomerang is useful when you want to pick out one target among a bunch of neutral or hostile mobs and your duelist will probably succeed in killing the target. An example of this would be if you want your duelist to kill a pig that's surrounded by beefalo, or maybe a tentacle surrounded by merms. The problem with using your duelist against non-boss enemies is that if the enemy dies, you have to fight whatever happens to be in or wandered into the large summoning circle, so place this circle wisely. If you want to unsummon your duelist, just stand outside their circle for 10 seconds if they are not active. If they are actively fighting something, good luck. The only way to unsummon them is to wait for the fight to finish or to hit them with an attack which is pretty difficult considering they are small, fast moving, see through target that will be next to a hostile mob. So you either have to run right up to them with a melee weapon or hit them with something from range which can be kind of expensive. I'd say the cheapest option is probably the fiery pen since Maxwell can get one just at the cost of sanity. Boomerangs are somewhat cheap but they are slow. The other options are ice staffs or fire staffs which both cost gems. But yeah, I'd say that's one of the biggest drawbacks to the duelists, your inability to easily recall them. So to summarize, the small circle indicates exactly where your duelists will spawn, 
The big circle indicates the area in which your duelist will aggro onto anything that's not friendly and where you need to stand in order for your idle duelist to not despawn in 10 seconds. If your duelists are idling in the big circle, they will aggro onto any mob that lands an attack on you or that you initiate an attack against. Finally, your duelists will never stop fighting and never switch targets until their target is dead. Anyways, that's all I got for how to control your duelists. Once they are set on the target, there is no going back, so make sure to plan accordingly. Hopefully you can use these tips for a more successful Maxwell gaming experience.